Good day, Grey Dates, and happy greetings to each and every one of you. I am so glad you decided to join us today for our Grey Dates Natural Sciences lesson brought to you by Worksheet Cloud. If you have any questions during this lesson, please send an email with your question to graydates at worksheetcloud.com. I'd like to start off with a quote from Henry Ford, and that is, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you are right. And I think that is very important that the times that we are living in at the moment is that you really believe in the power of possibility and you really need to adopt um, a growth mindset of I can do this. And, and if you feel you can't, I would rather you say I can't do this yet. Okay, I don't want you to get into a negative mindset of I can't do this, I can't do this, I can't do this, because then that's how things are going to land up being for you. You're going to have this belief system that you can't. And the fact that you are here and you are engaged and you've joined our lesson today means that you believe that you can do this and you're feeling empowered and you're feeling positive. So grade eights, keep up with this feeling. I really am proud of you. And I'm so glad to have you in the lesson today. My name is Mrs. Ernston, and I am the Worksheet Cloud Grade 8 Natural Sciences teacher. Please remember to take notes as we discuss things in class today. And today is going to be quite a fun lesson because we're going to be having a look at how you can carry out an experiment at home. So you definitely do need pen and paper to be able to write down um, your instructions and method and everything you need. So you can pause the video now and get everything that you need for the lesson. So those of you that have just joined us, welcome if this is your first lesson with us. And please make a plan to go and watch our previous lessons and catch up with the work that we've done. So we've had quite a few lessons on density. And um, what we're going to be looking at today is we're focusing on density of liquids and whether or not liquids have got different densities. And I want to see if you are able to you work with density calculations. And our experiment for today is, are you able to make your own layered density tower? So hopefully you're going to have a lot of fun in today's lesson. So the first thing I'd like you to do is I would like you to look at this picture on the left hand side of the screen. And all I want you to do is write down everything that you see. Once you've done that, after you've taken cognizance of your observational skills and you've written down everything that you can see, then I want you to sit back and, and say to yourself, well, what do I think? So I see this, what does it make me think? And I see this, and what does it make me think? And then once you've done that, I really want you to let your mind be creative. And I want you to extend your thinking. And I want you to say to yourself, well, I see this, and it makes me think this, but I wonder about this. So pause the video now and start the lesson with an I see, I think, I wonder activity. So, can you make a liquid density tower? So, I've asked you to see what liquids you have around the house. Now, before you go off and rummage through whatever's in the kitchen or the grocery cupboard or the pantry or the garage, please ensure that you have your parents or guardians permission to use these liquids. Please also be mindful whether or not these liquids are toxic or flammable. Um, so preferably, I would like to steer you towards liquids that we find in the kitchen. So things like syrup, honey, milk. You can always make up some washing up liquids, so a few spoons of washing powder in some water. You can have a look at plain water. You can color it with food dye if you want to. 
Have you got baby oil or cooking oil or olive oil? Um, some of you might have colored alcohol like methylated spirits or paraffin. Um, and please remember when building this liquid density tower, please do not bring it anywhere near any flame or open flame or keep it anything that um, is flammable. You can also be creative and maybe make, making up some mixtures or solutions. So what about adding salt to some water or bicarbonate, sodium of bicarbonate or baking powder or sugar. So see what you can use. Again, please, I want to implore you, please don't use um, any dangerous or toxic or flammable chemicals if possible. And then the other plea that I have is I would prefer you if you did this experiment outside. Um, and please remember to clean up after yourselves. Okay, so can you make a density tower? So if you happen to have these liquids in and around your kitchen, so honey, syrup, milk, washing up liquid, which is... Um, what uh, like a uh, sunlight liquid or something like that that greeny sometimes it's yellowy dishwashing liquid um water so we've said colored water it's just because water is transparent so if you've got any um food coloring you can add it to the water but plain normal tap water is absolutely fine um some baby oil cooking oil and then maybe you've got some methylated spirits or, or paraffin so what is important is if you are able to go and collect these items around the house, you must add these layers in the following order. So you must first add honey, followed by syrup, then milk, then washing up liquid, then colored water, then oil, then your paraffin or, or methylated spirits. So I wonder why I have asked you specifically to add them in this order. Well, let's go and have a look. So first, see what liquids you have around the house. Step two, you might need to make up some solutions if you want to. Step three is what's really, really important. With whatever liquids you have collected, you do need to go and check the densities of these liquids. And if you don't find them on any of the density tables that I give you, then maybe you just need to go to your internet or your um, internet provider and go and Google it and go and find out. So what is very, very important is that when you start building your density tower and you layering these liquids, you must start with the most dense liquids first. And if you don't do this, it's possible that your liquids might mix together and you're not going to get a nice clear layer. So put some thought into these first three steps. Step five, add the liquid so that it flows slowly down the side of the container. And the container I suggest you use is something transparent. So try and go and get an, a glass, a long tall glass or a jar or even maybe you've got an empty plastic one liter or two liter bottle, but definitely something that's transparent. And what also helps is, is as narrow as possible as well. So try to add each layer carefully down the side of the glass so you can always use it, um, tip the spoon upside down and you pour it over the back of the spoon. Maybe you've got a dropper somewhere in the kitchen or you've got a syringe or a funnel or a straw. So something that allows you to slide the chemical down the side of your container. Please remember whatever you are using, your funnel, your straw, your spoon to rinse it properly after each liquid. Step seven, this is where you need to learn to be patient and have some self-control and don't rush this experiment. Okay, take it slowly, put each layer together slowly, don't be in a rush because you don't want the layers to mix together. So you're going to hold the tip of your straw or funnel or whatever against the side of the container as close to the surface of the liquid that's already in the glass, but it must not 
touch. Make sure each liquid makes a complete layer that fully covers the previous layer. And if the layers do start to mix, just wait, just be patient. Let the layers settle before you add the next layer. So here I've given you some options of some household materials that you'll find around the house with their densities. So you can pause the video now if you need to just work out which densities um, are the highest and which are the lowest. Remember, you want to start with the higher densities first. So if you are finding a substance or material that's not on this list, like I said, just go and Google it and you should get a rough estimate of a density and then you can work it out from there. So what I'm hoping is you come up with some beautiful creations like this. So like I said, it doesn't really matter what container you use, a glass cup or a mug, or so long as it's transparent and you can see the layers. And I know what would be awesome is if you could take a picture and even label it like this. And when you do get back to school, if you could share this with your teacher and your friends. And then the real challenge that I have for you is instead of just layering it with our liquids, I wonder if you should try, see what happens if you add some solids along the way. So I will let you be as creative as you can while you go and have fun in this experiment. So what is an explanation behind what we're looking at today? Well, the secret science in all of today's lesson is obviously density. And density is a measure of how much mass is contained in a given unit of volume. The equation we deal with is density equals mass divided by volume. And every liquid has a density number associated with it. And we find these on density tables, or like I said, often you are able to Google the density and it will give you a value. So water, for example, has a density of one gram per cubic centimeter. Another way that you can write this, because we're dealing with liquids, we often are dealing with milliliters. So you can also write this as grams per milliliter. So one centimeter cubed is the same as one milliliter. And the numbers in the density table are based on data from the people who manufacture these items. So it is important that you realize that densities may vary from company to company, manufacturer to manufacturer, or brand to brand. But you should get a rough idea on um, where you need to put your liquids and in what order. So what you can do to elaborate on this topic is you can always go around the house and try and find some items like a safety pin, a key, a staple, or peanuts, or a raisin, or a plastic lid, or a bouncy ball. Be as creative as you can. And I want to see if you carefully drop an item one by one or individually into the center of your liquid tower. What is going to happen? So some items will stay on or near the top of the stack of liquids and other items may sink halfway through and other items may sink all the way to the bottom. I want you to think about why do we have these differences? Why do the solids sink to only a certain way, certain point in these liquids? The densities and masses of the objects you drop into the liquids is obviously going to vary. So if the layer of liquid is more dense than the object itself, the object is going to stay on top of that liquid. If the layer of liquid is less dense than the object, the object is going to sink through the layer until it meets a liquid layer that is dense enough to hold it up. So if you join us for the next lesson, we're going to elaborate more on this topic and we're going to have a look at some density calculations that are covering um, solids and liquids and densities and what solids float on what liquids and what liquids float and sink. So stay tuned for our next lesson. 
So I've got a little challenge for you. And that is, what if I give you three unknown liquids? How could you put them in order from highest density to lowest density? So you may need to pause the video while you sit and you think about this question. So let's just re read it again. You will be given three unknown liquids. How could you put them in order from highest density to lowest density? And I wish I could hear your creative and innovative answers. So just as an example, let's say I've given you three liquids. So I've given you carbon tetrachloride, I've given you oil, and I've given you water. Now for the benefits of this exercise, I have given you their densities already. So if I had to give you a beaker or a cylinder, I want you to work out which liquid would be the most dense and which liquid would be the least dense. So pause the video now and see if you are able to work out in what, what order would we find these liquids if we had to make a density tower. So we'll find carbon tetrachloride at the bottom because that has a density of 1,95. Then we'll find water because that has a density of 1,00 gram per mil. And then we'll have oil, which is the lightest out of all of them with a density of 0, 0,93 grams per milliliter. So to summarize this lesson, I would like you to do a three, two, one activity. I want you to write down three thoughts or words that you have from this lesson. Then I would like you to write down two questions that you have from this lesson. And then I would like you to write down one analogy. And that is something that's not necessarily related to science, but you are able to make a link with the work that we've covered today. So what everyday item or what is something from your life that could be relevant to the density of liquids? And how can you make these connections with today's lesson in your everyday life? And I just need one analogy of that. And if you do have any questions relating to anything in this lesson, please can you email your questions to grade 8 at worksheetcloud.com. And this concludes our lesson. I would like to thank Worksheet Cloud for bringing this lesson to you today. And most importantly, to you, grade 8. I want to thank you for joining the lesson today. And I really hope you go and have a lot of fun building your density towers. And like I said, please get permission from your parents and guardians to use the chemicals. Um, find a transparent glass that you can build your tower in. Collect all your equipment and preferably go and do this density tower outside. And then lastly, please clean up after yourself. Anyway, thanks, grade eights. Enjoy your lesson. Bye.